Hi guys, welcome to Triple Tree. Up for review today, the Royal Alloy PG300. Stay tuned to the end of the video for our honest opinion. For more motorcycle reviews, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our Facebook page. For all you belt drive lovers out there, this is belt driven. This all metal body, 128 kilo machine, cradles a 278 cc single cylinder, four stroke liquid cool engine, producing more than 26 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. It glides down the road with style and feels somewhat familiar. Definitely brought us back to the good old days, but with modern upgrades like LED lights, EFI, a touch-sensitive color dash that's readable in direct sunlight, an automatic CVT gearbox and ABS-assisted disc brakes on a set of 12-inch wheels and tubeless P-Rally tires. Starting and riding this charmer can't be easier. Electric start! Quiz and go! The weatherproof, lockable front compartment fits a set of raincoats and some smaller items. Amos is 1.84 meters tall. Let us show you how he looks on the bike. With Mark coming in as a pillion, he felt a little cramped, but he found the seat to be quite comfortable. With a combined weight of 175 kilos, the double hydraulic preload front and double shocks in the rear held up very well. Surprisingly, very okay! The turning radius of the bike is quite wide for a scooter. The longer wheelbase definitely contributes to this. But it also means better stability on the highway. In our opinion, the initial impression of the experience started with the switchblade key, one of the heaviest and most solid keys we have handled. It's the impression of prestige and quality. This is a beautifully crafted machine that feels very solid and all metal body really helps with the feel. The quality of the ride was very good. The suspension worked very well, but the usual double shock instability was quite noticeable in the corners. You might want to take it easy in the twisties. We did. Highway riding was doable, but we felt this machine was very at home cruising on the back roads. We also noticed some vibration at idle, but it wasn't anything excessive. Still okay. There was some indirect heat from the bike after some highway riding. The heat managed to travel up to the seat through the cover set. Seat warmer, tolerable, still okay. Perhaps a thicker seat would have helped with rider comfort and heat dissipation. Because we are of the taller percentile, we found the bike to be a little cramped. But this bike should fit the majority of people. The stock seat is not lockable, but the fuel cap is, securing the 11 litre fuel tank. With the current mod culture still very much alive, this machine begs for aesthetic modding. We love to see what you guys come up with. Take a picture and tag us in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe. I'm Winston and see you on the road.